good evening. It's 7 p.m. Monday evening, March 18th. This is a regular session of Athens City Council. I'm Jeff Reisner. I am uh, President Pro Tem tonight because the President of Council, uh, Sam Crowell, is out of town on other business. First thing to do is to establish a quorum, and I believe all members are present. The disposition of minutes of the regular session held March 4, 2024. I'd like to hear a motion to accept. So move. Seconded. We have a motion to uh, accept. Shall we have a vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. It's been approved. Communications. Does any member of City Council have any communications that they would like to share? Member Spielman is down there. Oh, wait. Yes, it yes. would be me, way down here. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I did get a couple of um, messages from business people along uh, Union Street mm -hmm. regarding the, let's say, one way traffic uh, and the construction there that is severely uh, impeding their profits right now, and they're hoping for some relief in some way uh, or some strategy and also they they tell me they don't know when it's supposed to be done so i'm hoping that we can meet with them talk with or you can uh mayor or someone can talk with them about what their options are and maybe discuss the possibility of returning to uh, what what we did have was traffic going one way and then letting people go the other way or something uh, and also, I have seen personally people going the wrong way and weaving in and out of the uh, barriers. So it's it's an issue. Member Swank. I uh, received a similar correspondence and visited three businesses on uh, West Union Street, uh, the Slice House, the um, Flower Shop, and Larry's Dog House. And to give you an idea of the magnitude of the problem, not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before, Larry's Doghouse had its slowest weenie Wednesday <laughs> in 25 years. Revenue was off 50%. Uh, the Slice House uh, is cutting hours. Uh, the Fort Flower Shop fortunately has a lot of phone and internet business and is hoping that their wedding business this uh, summer will carry them through. All three asked, though, for a schedule if they could get a week-by-week -week prediction of what the traffic patterns were going to be so they could adjust their staffing accordingly. Member Clodfelder. A number of residents of Athens have expressed concern to me about something very related to what Member Speldness was talking about, which is the construction that's going on on West Union Street and on Derry Lane both of which go to two of the four polling places in Athens uh, for the community, plus there's Baker Center. Um, the Board of Elections has assured me that they're going to post directional signs to show people kind of the back way to get to each of those two polling places, that being the Dairy Barn on Dairy Lane and Ohio Means Jobs on West Union Street. And so people can access them. They just, like for West Union Street, you have to take 682 around and then hit Union Street over by White's Mill and then come up. And, um, and there are directional signs for, um, for the Dairy Barn as well that will be there by tomorrow morning when the polls open at 6.30. Member McCary. Thank you, Pro Tem Reisner. I have shared with council members an email regarding an opportunity to participate or attend a webinar by the Strong Cities Network, which has been discussed in recent meetings as a resource that we've partnered with so that we can find strategies to combat polarization, extremism, and hate. Uh, the webinar that I emailed council members about just earlier this evening is this Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Global Crises, Local Impacts, Threats to Social Cohesion, and How Cities Can Respond. So council members have those details on how to register, and there will be a briefing on the hate and extremism landscape related to the Israeli-Gaza crises. And uh, if folks are not able to attend that, the Strong Cities Network will be collaborating with the National League of Cities to provide another webinar identified in that email for Wednesday, March 27th on 
the leadership mayors and other elected officials can provide in the aftermath of an attack or incident or longer term support resilience and strengthen social cohesion. Member Wood. Yeah, uh, I have also, um, I have two things to, to share, um, or two bins of things to share. One, um, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Everybody's already talked about the Union Street uh, items, and we, I also received the same emails. I talked to John um, about his issue, and I also know that Sam, President of Council, shared with the mayor the email, and I know the mayor has taken some action, um, which is great to hear, and I appreciate that. I think that it's good to hear, um, and so wanted to thank uh, Sam and the mayor for, for that. Uh, as well, and also um, I called a friend of mine that works in road construction and uh, spoke to him a little bit and he said, you know, interestingly, some of these things have been planned years ago, long before some of these businesses might have been there, etc. Um, so just some interesting dynamics, but it's good and I appreciate that the, the uh, administration has been responsive um, to that. Um, and secondarily, we've gotten a number of emails about the Bailey Trail system um, and that issue uh, that came up last week. Um, we received a email from uh, Dr. Shannon Moore, Moore, who is a vet in the area, uh, and Dr. Moore shared um, her uh, profound desire to see the City of Athens continue to fund ORCA. Uh, she said that ORCA has been instrumental in the programs that benefit our community, and in fact, facilitating economic, social, environmental, and health benefits um, from our environmental resources, and our community will continue to share uh, see a great return on investment by continuing to develop those um, hiking and bicycling and, and backpacking routes and other means for development. And I think uh, we actually heard from the uh, university today at lunch some of the same things that they highly encouraged us to invest in those things. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, and got a long note from Laura Sowers, who is the owner of the Bailey's Lodging Company, uh, she said that it's specifically tailored, a company specifically tailored to visitors on the Bailey's Trail Center, and that she is a co-founder of Women, uh, Women Bikers of the Bailey's, and wanted to write and uh, encourage us as well to uh, continue our commitment to fund the, the trail system, to stand by our commitment for that. Um, and she said that, quote, uh, the Bailey's is not just a collection of trails, it's a vision of sustainable community-connected, world-class recreation that promises significant return. And the economic impact of similar trail systems has been profound, uh, drawing visitors, um, and that it attracts uh, high-wage employers, employers looking for quality of life. So um, I won't read the full thing because it's a, a whole essay, but I think it was uh, very uh, enlightening, again, to hear from somebody that has a business directly based on this thing. Um, in our community, and uh, so it's been heartening to hear from a number of community members through email and otherwise that they would like to see us take this action now. Okay. Is that one? That's it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, reports and communications from other elected officials. Treasurer, is the auditor present? No? Okay. Mr. Mayor? Do you have any communications you would care to share? I do, and I'm going to share from the dais for a change. Um, do I have to get my name and address and all that stuff? <laughs> yeah, somebody did call. I don't know, didn't they? Um, before I, I dive into um, my report out to council on my recent trip to our partner city over in Ukraine, um, I want to just echo back to council that I certainly received those emails as well. As a matter of fact, the one that uh, that uh, council member Wood is, is and several of you have mentioned, um, I was at the National League of Cities and contacted the uh, the most applicable person uh, to make sure that there are immediate corrective actions taking on West Union. I take full responsibility for the mess that. Uh, is the construction replacing aged infrastructure underground on West Union, you know, for a city that's over 120 years old, that's not an uncommon occurrence for us to have to replace aging infrastructure. I know that there are issues um, associated with those. We experienced it on Stimson Avenue. 
We've experienced it on East State Street, um, Dairy Lane, recognize Dairy Lane as well, but um, uh, know that, again, I take responsibility when issues like this don't turn out as planned and have made <coughs> immediate corrective actions to make sure that, that they are remedied moving forward. And lessons learned with some of the newer administration at Engineering and Public Works, trust me, my message has been delivered and they understand. Um, I, I want to share as well, before I dive into this report, um, that I hope that you find interesting, uh, is uh, that we are again recognized as being a Tree City USA here in the city. I just got the letter today. Um, so I'm blanking on how many years it's been going now, 34 or 35 years we've been a Tree City USA, but yay for good people. <laughs> Um, all right, if you could go ahead and Scott and Ryan tee up the slides so that people can kind of follow along with me. But uh, as a lot of you probably recognize, um, I did spend eight days in country over in Ukraine. Um, um, and uh, well, during that trip, I spent two days in Lviv. Uh, obviously, Lviv is not our sister city, um, but that was set up through USAID, the US Agency on International Development, and their counterpart in country, which is Habela, uh, because they wanted me to see some, some uh, notable um, entities in Lviv while I was there. And uh, what you see here is Unbroken um, Rehabilitation Hospital which was fascinating. Um, Unbroken has become the epicenter for trauma-induced amputations and prosthetics in the country, it is the number one leader in the country. And while there, I was able to uh, engage with the administration, those are the individuals that you see in a lot of these pictures, and they are very interested in seeing if they can establish a connection with the Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine, which I have a meeting in early April with Dr. Ken Johnson at HCOM to see if I can't get some relationship going to where possibly having um, residencies or training ships or something of that sort for in individuals who are interested in this level of trauma emergency medicine. Uh, it was a great visit um, and a great place to engage, begin my trip. Uh, also while in country uh, or in Lviv, I got to go to the Fields of Mars, um, which is a UNESCO site. I didn't go look at the historic monuments in the UNESCO site. I'm sure they're wonderful. I just concentrated my time attending uh, the portion of the cemetery that is for defenders. Uh, that's what they call their military members over there, defenders. And in this particular cemetery, which is one of thousands across the nation, there were 600 defenders interned in this site since, since uh, February 24th of 2022. Uh, and you see me placing a bouquet on the most recently interned defender that, that was in that cemetery, an individual who had just died eight days prior. Uh, the other thing that was striking in being over there is that I'm, I'm a child, uh, I was a child of the, of the Vietnam conflict, and not recognizing that the average age for people, you know, succumbing or fighting over in Vietnam was approximately 19.9 years of age people serving for 12-month tours. Um, walking through the cemetery, it was recognizable right away that the average age is somewhere closer to 36 or 38 years of age. There were several markers that I passed by where there were individuals that were my age, I'm 64, um, who were defenders who were fighting. Unlike the Vietnam conflict, there is no date of separation for the defenders. You're there. And you're there until you're told that you can return. Um, it was, uh, needless to say, it was moving. Uh, the, the photos on the bottom that you see is the monument to the heavenly hundred heroes. Those are the 107 individuals who lost their lives protesting in Independence Square in Kiev in, um, in February of 2014, um, what's referred to as the initial invasion um, the 2022, February 24th, invasion they refer to as the full-scale invasion in Ukraine. Uh, these are images of my engagement with the governor's cabinet in Rivne. Um, Ostro, our sister city, or partner city, 
is in the Rivne Oblast. The, I had the opportunity to engage with the governor's cabinet while there and uh, learned a lot about them. The picture that you see in the lower left-hand corner is me giving them the state of Ohio, obviously, flag, which they were elated to be able to take that and fly that at some point over their state capital. Uh, and what you see in the lower right-hand corner, those are markers in the town square, um, three-sided markers for defenders that have lost their lives in Rivne alone. Again, wonderful relationship. I just got an email back from the governor's office indicating that they wanted to continue a relationship with Athens, uh, much like Ostro is going to continue that relationship. One of the things that will probably blow your minds about Ostro, I attended one of their city council meetings. I think some, in some ways, when I first heard the number, that we're fortunate to where there are seven city council members and one president. Over there, there's 26 council members. Um, but it was impressive to see the decorum and how they were able to get business done while I was sitting in there. I expected to see something different, and that wasn't the case. They were very orderly and, and interesting to watch. This is Mary, uh, Mayor Yuri Ahutka, who is my counterpart in Ostro. And uh, this was a moment in which we laid a bouquet of flowers at their monument for those who have died in the full-scale invasion. I also got to visit while I was in country, in Ostro rather, um, a volunteer center. They have volunteer centers that are all throughout the nation. This is the volunteer center in Ostro where volunteers spend their time um, helping build things like in the lower left-hand corner, camouflage netting for the military members on the front lines. Or you see me pouring paraffin wax in what are referred to as trench candles. Again, volunteers coming together making these trench candles because the defenders are asking for things to keep them warm at night and to light the trenches in which they're fighting from. And in the upper right-hand corner, that was a t-shirt um, that I had custom made at Zones uh, to give to those working, spending their hours. The woman that you see in the middle in the upper left-hand corner, she volunteers her time every chance she gets because her husband per perished on the front lines as a defender as well. Um, spent a full day at the Austro Academy, our OU counterpart in Austro. Um, and um, I failed to mention to you my first experience of being subjected to an air raid siren, air raid alert, was in Rivne to where we had to seek shelter. The second time was when I was prepared to give a group of about 50 students at the Austro Academy a discussion. We set it up as a lecture. I didn't want to lecture because I'm a foreign professor. Instead, I wanted just open dialogue. And uh, just as we were getting to roll, the air raid sirens went off, and we had to go into a former crypt, which is what you see on the upper left-hand corner, um, and had to shelter in place um, as uh, MiG jets were flying overhead, um, and no one knowing what's going to happen. Luckily, nothing did happen. But uh, it was real when I was there. Uh, the other images, i um, not going to get into any detail, but the lower right-hand corner was my engagement with the provost of the Austro Academy and establishing relationships. One of the individuals you see sitting over on um, the far right of that lower right-hand corner image uh, was a psychology professor that they're trying to set up a, out, or a psychology clinic over there. And so as soon as I came back, I was able to establish something between Ohio University Psychology Clinic and the Austro Academy to where OU is going to help them stand up their own clinic over there. This was probably the most emotional day I had when I was over there. And trust me, I had my own level of vicarious trauma by being in country. Um, this is, uh, was the, princip the principles in the upper right-hand corner. Um, this was a lyceum, a grade school, K through 12, over there. I want, to, want you guys to make note of what she's holding in her hand. Um, that's a box of chocolates. It's a box of chocolates that's, that was rigged with C8 and blasting caps. Um, below that is a basketball that was rigged the same way. And over on the lower left-hand corner is a stuffed animal that was filled with C8 and detonating devices. These are what the Russian military are deploying in neighborhoods at nighttime, and then children are coming out and picking these things up and being either uh, severely injured or killed. Um, that was tough to swallow 
for me to sit there and see those. Upper left-hand corner was a, a, in one of the rooms in the school where it was their culture and heritage room, and they were teaching me basically about their own heritage, things about their daily lives. The young man that you see in the white shirt that's speaking with me um, was talking to me about embroidered shirts, the embroidery on their clothing. After that visit was over, we left the room and walked out in the hallway, and the teacher <laughs> leaned over to me, and she said, I know that that one student, one gentleman was kind of off a little bit, just, you know, please forgive him. His dad died six days ago in the front lines. Uh, this is more on the school. One of the things that was really heartwarming, I, I know I'm kind of sharing you kind of a real dark side of my experience of it. There was many, many upsides. The little girl in the lower center um, gave me a painting, which is in my office. She was the sweetest thing, um, smiling ear to ear just because I she was giving this picture to a mayor. Uh, they'd never seen a mayor from the United States before. So uh, she, even though I don't think so, she thought it was pretty special. Um, the, uh, we also get engaged with a forestry class at the school to which I was able to give them a pound, which is probably the equivalent of about 200 pawpaw seeds, um, and shared the story of the pawpaw here in the state of Ohio, that it's the state's natural fruit, um, and gave them the seeds with their forestry group, help, encouraging them to grow their own grove over there. Yes, those were USDA certified, and I took them over, and everything was cool. Um, just in case anybody's worried. Um, this I wanted to show, because part of the, the mission was to engage um, businesses and take things from our local businesses over and engage with counterparts over there. Their farmer's market was amazing. I know that we think ours is amazing, and it is. Over there, it's like everything you can imagine you can purchase their farmer's market, from clothing to car parts to <coughs> fruits and vegetables and things of that nature. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, in the lower right-hand corner, I got to meet with a, um, a company that works with wood products um, and basically makes school desks and tables and things of that nature. Uh, and so it's one of the things I'd like to do is engage this group with Dr. Tom Gibbs as they're looking at what they're going to do with the new high school. And then the two images on the left-hand side uh, was an eco-farm and an eco-tourism where they're specializing in creating a space for defenders to come and seek respite um, as well as mental health care while they're there and get back to nature and not in places of conflict. Uh, the wonderful family to engage with um, and learn more about what they're doing and sharing what we do here in the city of Athens when it comes to that sector. So a great engagement. Uh, this is a wonderful slide. I don't know if council members you had a chance to see this, but uh, that center slide is, again, Mayor Yuri Yehudka and another mayor from a bordering city, but the Stella that they've created, that obelisk, which is the city's seal as their sister city. And then they created one of these mileage signposts where uh, you see that Athens is on the on the bottom of that signpost. Um, I'm pointing in that direction, and basically I told the crowd that it, clearly you made the sign so I knew how to get home again. Um, the, the lower right-hand corner, um, I experienced three funeral processions while I was in country, and it's moving to see that the city comes to a stop when one of these is rolling through the city. The, the cars pull over on the side of the road, people get out of their cars, and they take a knee and uh, kneel as the procession runs through the city, as did I when I was over there. Um, the upper right-hand corner, that was pretty special. That was kind of impromptu where I got to visit a, a brand new facility for um, abused women um, and get to see how that works. That's a six-bed six unit um, and also accommodates children for people that are, are experiencing uh, physical harm from a spouse or a individual. Um, so to get to see that was, again, moving as well. The last slide I'm showing you is, again, I was there on the 24th of February. It was meaningful. I was purposeful in selecting to be there during that date. That's the two-year mark of their invasion, the initial invasion. <clears throat> and so I attended a rally, basically, and certainly gave some remarks and among those remarks was that I will do whatever I can to make sure that Congress continues to fund um, the effort that they're going through. And uh, the lower corner, the lower right or left-hand corner, 
that's a book. That book is full of defenders from Ostro who have lost their lives defending their country. Um, and then the center slide is uh, a Stu Mac uh, Stuart McDonald, a Stumac ukulele kit that they sent me over with that I was able to give to Mayor Yehudka, who in turn is going to give that to a group um, in the music industry in, in uh, Ostro. Uh, but then once that ukulele is made, they're going to give that to the battered woman's home um, to, to where they have something that hopefully someone can play it or learn to play it. Uh, but totally a, a moving event. The last thing I want to share with council, and then I'll, I'll cede my time, is that while I was there, everybody that I met with in Lviv, uh, in Ostro, in Rivne, every one of them basically said the same thing to me, that, and that was basically thank you for the U.S. funding, thank you for organizations that put together Connex boxes full of medical equipment, you know, bulletproof vests, whatever you sent. It's all been used effectively um, and with great purpose over there. But Mayor, please make sure the message goes back to, up to Capitol Hill, that, that the continued funding is absolutely necessary. As they're rationing ammunition on the front line, you know, it, it by default makes every defender have to become a sharpshooter or a sniper to where they're effectively doing what they need to do given what they're having to deal with. Um, during the National League of Cities Conference, I had the opportunity to spend 30 minutes with our Congressman, Troy Balderson. The story I told you, I shared with him in clip note version for, for time, um, and he heard it loud and clear what is needed over there and the continued funding. I got three minutes with President Biden, and uh, trust me you, I said the same thing to President Biden. Uh, and he had some really nice things to say um, privately in my ear, uh, which I cannot repeat on TV. So, uh, but uh, he, he understands and he knows what needs to be done over there as well. Um, and so I, I've conveyed that with Capitol Hill. Um, I've shared that with Senator Sherrod Brown. As a matter of fact, I was texting Sherrod Brown when I was in country uh, and he had some really nice things to say as well. Like he's proud that I was there. Please hurry back. I need you in, in Ohio. Um, so, so that all said, um, I'm open to taking any questions from council on my report. Council Member Spellis. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was texting with a friend of mine who lives in Kiev who works for the UN, and he has told me twice that uh, over the last month or so that they are really concerned that the way things are going, we're going to have World War III over there. It's really, they're really scared. And also that uh, Kyiv has been protected because of their anti-missile uh, equipment and because of the shortage of monies from the U.S., they are at greater risk in Kyiv um, because of, of that. So I'm, you know, very concerned and alarmed for for him and his family and everybody else over there. So thank you for advocating for them. Member McCarry. Thank you, President Pro Tem Reisner, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your report. I have a quick question followed by maybe a longer one. The quick one is that I heard you use the phrase in country a few times, and I was hoping you might explain uh, what that means. I assume it means uh, in the country of Ukraine. But uh, then also, how has this experience shaped your uh, thoughts about our city's engagement in international issues? I'm going to speak to Ukraine um, on that topic and Ukraine alone. Um, we have a, what I presented to all of council before the meeting tonight is basically the contract between Austro-Ukraine and the city of Athens, Ohio. Um, you're correct. When I say in country, I was talking about being in Ukraine. Um, I flew into Krakow uh, and then had security detail take me into country, um, into Ukraine. Um, and to Lviv, and then on to Rivne and Ostro, uh, and then back again. Um, it's really steeled my resolve to continue this relationship and to build out connections between our partner city, Ostro. Uh, as soon as I came back, 
I was hard at work engaging with Dr. Tom Gibbs, uh, with the school district. I happened to have parent-teacher conference uh, two days later, and with my own daughter's class, um, told the teachers were asking, so you just came back. How was that? And I told them, and I said, I, I would like to establish a pen pal program, if possible, with your classroom, to which they're at work doing that. Um, you know, I, I mentioned businesses. Um, engaging with um, the businesses that I experienced over there, we'll continue to do that. One of the things they found to be fascinating is the idea and the concept of home rule. It blew their minds. They're like, <laughs> home rule? What is this home rule thing? You know, because if you think about it, they're still operating in a lot of cases under the remnants of the USSR, the Soviet Union, to where everything was centralized. They are decentralized, but that was a real interesting concept to them, and they want to continue to learn from us as to how, how do you... How do you manage home rule? How does that work with home rule? I mentioned issue one, I mentioned issue one and issue two, um, to which they were fascinated by that as well. Um, so um, I plan to continue to engage with their government. I'm hopeful that council will engage with their council as well. I know that that's uh, like uh, four to one, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> I think that you guys can manage that. Um, I've been working with the university as I have already indicated and in having building out relationships um, I certainly briefed President Lori Stewart Gonzalez uh, upon my return and things that we will hopefully be doing moving forward as partners and partnering with the Austro Academy in Austro Ukraine. I don't know if that answers your question fully, but thank you. You asked about international, but uh, again, I'm speaking with the voice of Ukraine because that's the partnership that we already have in the document sitting right before you. Other questions? Council? Well, thank you, Mr. Sure. Mayor. Thank you. Moving right along. No other officials. Oh, I forgot to ask the law director. Do you have anything to report? Okay. You're so quiet. Yeah. Um, let's move on to ordinances for a third reading. Uh, the, the third reading ordinances are the ones that uh, we will will be read and we will vote on. So ordinance 1224, an ordinance conveying city-owned property located at 83 Columbus Road to the Athens Community Improvement Corporation, ACIC, introduced by Council Member Swain. I'll just read the first whereas because we've talked about this on, in detail. Uh, just uh, recap, the property at 83 Columbus Road is that vacant property next to uh, Curtis Towing across from Bickle Insurance. Uh, it's been sitting that way for quite some time. Uh, environmental concerns have been remediated. And the whereas is simply this. Whereas the CIC can offer economic development options that might not otherwise be possible should this property remain municipally owned, be ordained by the, city of, uh, the Council of the City of Athens that we will convey this to the uh, CIC. As the mayor said earlier about economic development uh, and, and business uh, possibilities he explored in Ukraine. This is an opportunity here local to do the same, and it's a lot easier if this land uh, is in the hands of the CIC. So I would move that uh, we uh, pass uh, Ordinance 1224. Second. Any discussion? Administration, anything to say about it? Audience? No? Okay. We've had a motion and a second. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. It's been passed. Ordinance 20-24, an ordinance accepting permanent bike path and utility right-of-way easements from the Athens County Public Libraries, introduced by Council Member Swain. Uh, 2024 deals with uh, granting easements from the library over and across the bike path should the city need to you do utility work or bike path and bike path improvement work uh, the library uh, director and staff have signed off on this it's just now a matter of council passing an ordinance this evening granting that permanent easement uh, i would move that we pass 2024. second we've had a motion and a second any discussion? Administration? Audience? Anyone? Very well. 
All those in favor of passing uh, 2024, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. It's passed. And let's see. Ordinances for a second reading. I to call it up here on the computer. Here we go. An ordinance authorizing the service safety director to enter into contracts for construction and construction engineering of the city sewer si system improvement project number 330 and declaring an emergency introduced by council member Reisner. I understand this ordinance requires a uh, suspension of the rules it does. and for what reason? The timing of getting this thing rolling. Okay. I'd like to, uh, I'll make a motion that we suspend the rules for uh, 1024. We have a second. Second. Any discussion about suspension of the rules? All those in favor of suspending the rules signify by saying aye. 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 Those say, opposed say nay. It's passed. The rules are suspended. I'd like to make a, a motion that we adopt Ordinance 1024. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion about this project? Administration? Okay. Um, if required, I can read a couple of the sections here, if anyone wants to hear it. Uh, section 1, the 2024 Appropriation Ordinance. ordinance. 130-23 is hereby amended by appropriating from the unappropriate balance the sum of $2,107,350 to sewer fund plant 750.637, transaction code 500, and increasing the appropriations by set amount. The service safety director is hereby authorized to expend up to $2,107,350 from sewer fund plant 750 Transaction code 500 for said project number 330. So we can vote now. All those in favor of adopting uh, Ordinance 1024, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ordinance has been approved. Ordinance 2424, an ordinance approving the unnamed right of way of Herald Avenue to be named. Davis and Court, introduced by Councilmember Swank. Now that we have uh, renamed that section of road on the far west side uh, so that our uh, 911 emergency crews, our first responders and all that, heaven forbid, but should they need to go to a location, uh, we, we need to uh, pass this as soon as possible, and I'm going to suggest that we uh, suspend the rules per the request of uh, Director Stone. Is that a uh, motion? I uh, so move. Seconded. Second. For matters of public safety. Yes, because right now, if you, uh, you know, if someone were to call from 911, they're not exactly sure where to go. They'll be in the neighborhood, but uh, in the neighborhood, uh, in case of emergency, it isn't quite good enough. So this pinpoints it to the okay. spot on the map, and that's the purpose for the safety of the citizens of Athens, the property, and any individuals residing or working in that area. Mm -hmm. We've had a motion to suspend the rules. It's been seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those say, opposed, say nay. Yes, the rules have been suspended. Member uh, Swank. I would move that we pass 2024, an ordinance approving the unnamed right-of-way of Herald Avenue to be named Davison Court. Second. Discussion? Administration? Audience? We've had a motion and a second to adopt 2024. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. 2024 has been adopted. Ordinance 25-24. An ordinance amending ordinance 62-23 authorizing preliminary engineering services for the State Route 
682256 Intersection Improvement Project Number 357, introduced by Council Member Spielness. Yes, as we've discussed in committee and uh, in first reading, there is uh, an additional amounts of money once the uh, once we've learned more about what needed to be done that is required in order to make uh, allow for the money for engineering services. So initially it was one million three hundred and ninety five thousand five hundred and eighty nine and the construction cost estimate after the completed stage one design is three point five million. Uh, so there, the city administration is wanting a design firm to expand the project scope to include selected improvements north of Route 682. So um, this is just more money for a project that I think needs to be done. Thank you. But I do have a quick question. So um, if I could ask the mayor for a quick question. Okay, so uh, we have some plans in place for this, but I'm assuming that those are preliminary until the design firm has looked at it more thoroughly, because there are some issues with the design, and I'm wondering if um, that those are obviously not locked in stone, but I just want to confirm that. That's accurate. The again, as the name implies, so this is for the detailed preliminary designs mm -hmm. as they as they dive into this. You're correct in that the the earlier designs were just preliminary designs scoping out where this would go, what it may look like, but mm -hmm. certainly not the detailed designs. So there's going to be a lot more coming in terms of design. I, I will share with council as well that we just identified funding to now just know this is potentially, you know, looking at what's called a pedestrian flyover. Uh, we engaged with an organization that represents the rail industry because um, we have down in that area the, the rail crossing, uh, the grade crossing. And we know that, um, you know, for safe pedestrian passage on the north side of that, you know, would require some really interesting finessing. But there is grant funding out there uh, now that we could potentially continue to look to see is it worth and would we be successful in applying for a, a pedestrian flyover? It's basically a bridge, you know, a pedestrian bridge that's ADA accessible, which is going to have its own set of challenges to do but uh, it's certainly something that we're going to explore to go along with this. So I guess council member Spiel, this, to, the short answer to your question is yes, these are preliminary. We're still looking for other sources of funding to, to grow out the scope of this project. Thank you, good to hear. Oh, member Wood. Yeah, uh, given that we're all getting a uh, education on the impact of uh, traffic and businesses, and uh, this is certainly in a spot that, that will hit that. It might be prudent to ask at this point, you know, that the administration also uh, include the, some sort of traffic impact or other mitigation yes. that we can do. Is that already planned, maybe? It, or can we add that? It's in the plans as it stands right now. Um, you know, lessons learned, not of late. Uh, but, but with the, the previous larger roundabouts, Richland Avenue, 682 roundabout, you know, it was built uh, in, in phases to where we were able to continue to have traffic flowing on that particular project. Plus that was a ridge deck repair, so it was even more complicated. Um, but also the Stimson Avenue roundabout to where there was always flow of traffic either you know on, on either sides of the roundabout. This will be planned the same way. Uh, we're certainly aware of that because of uh, the, the fact that Oblinus Hospital is right there on West Union and, and how, what would that look like, not just for people trying to get to the hospital, who are patients, but also physicians trying to get there. So we are. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, ordinance 26-24. An ordinance amending Athens City Code, Title 17, Municipal Income Tax, Chapter 17.01, in general, 
Section 17.01.011B, Authority to Levy Tax, and 17.01.012, Purposes of Tax, Rate, and Chapter 17.01.09, Annual Return, Section 17.01.091A, 1, Return and Payment of Tax, introduced by Council Member Reisner. Ordinance 27-24, an ordinance amending the 2024 Appropriation Ordinance 130-23, introduced by Council Member Reisner. Ordinances for, second, uh, for first reading, I believe we have one that needs to be suspended also. Uh, the first one is 28-24, an ordinance amending the 2024 Appropriation Ordinance 130-23, and authorizing an enter fund transfer. Allow me to read it for the first time. Be it ordained by the Council of the City of Athens, Ohio, Section 1, the 2024 Appropri Appropriation Ordinance 130-23 is hereby amended by appropriating from the unappropriated balance the sum of $100,000 to General Fund 101, Transaction Code 300, for payment of 2024 Bureau of Workmen's Compensation, BWC, invoices. Section 2, the 2024 Appropriation Ordinance 130-23 is further amended by decreasing ARPA, ARPA funds 2886, or 286, Transaction Code 500 by $140,000 and increasing ARPA fund 286, Transaction Code 600 for transfer by same amount and increasing and decreasing set appropriations by set amount. Section 3, the auditor is hereby authorized to make the following interfund transfer from ARPA Fund 286 to ACIC Fund 906, amount $160,432.70. Section 4, this ordinance shall be in effect in full force upon passage and approval by the mayor. Any discussion? Let's first read. Administration, anything? No? Audience? Very well. Ordinance 29-24, an ordinance approving a then and now certificate for payment to BIS Digital and declaring an emergency introduced by Council Member Reisner. We'll suspend. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules for 29-24. Second. Reason for the suspension is this is a long overdue bill, payment to this company, and it needs to be paid right now. So let's get the ball rolling. So we have uh, a motion and a second to suspend the rules. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Rules have been suspended. I would like to make a motion that we adopt 24 dash, or 29 dash 24. Second. Allow me to read it. Be it ordained by the Council of the City of Athens, Ohio, a then and now certificate in the amount of $3,358 to BIS Digital for a digital recording system maintenance contract is hereby approved for payment. Section 2. The ordinance shall be an emergency measure necessary for the preservation of the health, welfare, and safety of the residents of the City of Athens, Ohio, in order to maintain fiscal integrity and shall be in full force in effect upon its passage and approval by the mayor. So we've had a motion and a second. Any discussion? Administration? Anyone from the technical department? Okay, audience. All those in favor of approving 29-24, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Ayes have it, it's been approved. Ordinance 30-24, an ordinance amending ordinance 65-23, 
authorizing engineering services for rehabilitation of the Stimson Avenue Bridge Project number 358 introduced by Council Member Spielness. Okay, um, this is yet another project in the city to improve our city in many ways. So this is, uh, uh, has more than was originally planned for, again. Uh, so it reads, whereas the city was awarded $3,292,795 from ODOT, local major bridge program funds to re rehabilitate the Stimson Avenue Bridge, and, and this is the addition, whereas after a more detailed review of the costs involved, things go up, folks, I'm sorry to say. The city has been awarded an additional $1,422,590 from ODOT. And this is uh, the original still. Whereas said rehabilitation includes a new concrete deck, approach slab replacement, rocker replacement, steel painting, and street lighting improvement. So it will look nicer, be safer, and it's important to maintain and upgrade bridges and infrastructure rather than letting it deteriorate to the point where it costs a lot more and is a lot more dangerous. So it's the right thing to do. Uh, be it ordained by Council of the City of Athens, Ohio, Section 1, the 2024 Appropriation Ordinance 130-23 is hereby amended by appropriating from the unappropriated balance the sum of $130,000 to Street Rehabilitation Fund 572 Transaction Code 500 and increasing the total appropriations by said amount. Here's the new part, uh, Section 2. Uh, section 3 of Ordinance 65-23 is hereby amended to read as follows, Section 3. The Service Safety Director is further authorized to expend up to $580,000 from Street of Rehabil Rehabilitation Fund 572 Transaction Code 500 for said project 358. So it will be an improvement and as we've discussed before, we're going to make every attempt possible to not interfere with business and traffic. Thank you. Discussion? Administration, anything to say about it? Uh, it would be a great project. Uh, you know, that, that bridge, quite honestly, Council, it, it, there's always been this issue of who owns what portion of the bridge and so on and so forth. But, you know, with, with these two grants or these two, well, these two tranches of funding, uh, it, it will cover the entire bridge. We're not going to just do half of it. Um, <laughs> It'll cover the entire bridge. It will include a sidewalk, um, a pedestrian passageway. Uh, there will be many improvements that you'll see to that bridge as it becomes, and, and truly is, you know, it, it's one of the most notable entrance, uh, you know, gateways into the city of Athens. So. And I, I, wish I wish I could promise all of you on council that there will be no more improvements on Stimson Avenue, um, at least with the public right of way, because we've invested a lot of money into the Stimson Avenue corridor. So I don't foresee anything for years and years and years to come. So we hope. Um, any other discussion? Members of the audience? No? Very well. Thanks for the first read. Next, we have a one reading resolution. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt resolution 03-24. Second. Before we vote, I'd like to read it one more time, so let's refresh our memories. A resolution requesting all elected officials institute a hiring freeze for positions funded by the city's general fund until a position review has taken place. Whereas, to prevent our general fund balance from dropping below our cash balance policy minimum, vacant positions in the general fund should be carefully reviewed prior to filling in order to alleviate any need for a reduction in force, while at the same time recognizing that some vacant positions will, by necessity, be advertised and filled. Be it resolved by the Council of the City of Athens, Ohio, Section 1, City Council hereby requests all elected officials institute a hiring freeze for positions funded by the city's general fund until a position review has taken place. 
This policy shall remain in effect until December 31st, 2024. So we've had a motion and a second. Is there any discussion after being read? Member Swain. Uh, question. Uh, having been through a similar situation twice back in the early 1980s, the position review, and this is directed to the administration because this is solely an administrative function, um, the position <coughs> review, will that be for all positions um, funded by the general fund or just those that are vacant uh, at this current time or those where we have a, a turnover in the next X number of months or all? Uh, I'm just curious because it's a, it's a laborious process to do it correctly. It'll, it'll be all. Okay. It'll be all. It's a soft hiring freeze. Um, there will be, I, I, I've mentioned this at the mayor auditor meeting um, where I meet with Auditor Hecht every week. Um, and what we've decided, and it was by my request, that that review is, will be conducted by someone from the auditor's office, um, likely uh, the president of city council, myself, uh, and serve a safety director as we go through and review them. But, you know, again, if, and I'll throw a hypothetical out there, I know that it's just a hypothetical, but, you know, if for whatever reason uh, I were to lose um, one of my directors for any department, you know, that would constitute a really quick meeting um, that we need to have someone who's replacing that individual because of that level of loss. Um, you know, but we'll review other positions as well. Uh, so it's it's going to be it'll be a process. It'll be a, a lot of work, but it's my job. Thank you. Any other questions from council before we vote on this resolution? Member McCary. Thank you, Pro Tem Reisner. I am looking for clarification on the policy remaining in effect until December thirty first, twenty twenty four. Will that change if the position review is completed? before that, say in October 2024? So it's like a matter of interpretation of this uh, language here about the policy remaining in effect until December 31st. I'm not sure if that's a legal question or mayor. No, no, so there's not gonna be like one process that takes place. I mean, if we find that the revenue is not what we anticipated it being, you know, all the way up to the end of the year, then it'll stay into effect till the end of the year. If we, if we see, in the October time frame, which is when we see another tranche of, of income tax coming in, you know, it could potentially go in the other direction to where we sit there and look at it and go, do we, can, do we need to have this still in force at this point in time? So council, I can be coming to you with just the opposite request, okay. uh, you know, with again, working closely with the treasurer and with the auditor and say, things are improving. Um, and therefore, do we need to continue to have this in force? So. Thank you. I think then I wonder if that last sentence in section one, this policy shall remain in effect until December 31st, 2024. Is there some caveat to that uh, or until, um, or is it just a matter of council needing to take action in order to change that deadline or that? Yeah. Uh, it, the latter? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's our budget year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fiscal year. Great. Thank you. Any other remarks, questions, before we vote? Okay, I'd like to take a vote on this. All those in favor of resolution 03.24, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. Now we get to announcements and other businesses. Business. Uh, I'd like to hear a motion to accept the auditor's February 2024 financial reports. So moved. We have a second? Second. All those in favor of accepting the reports, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. It's been passed. Well, next is a motion to accept December 2023 and February 2024 credit card transactions. We have a motion to accept. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on this? 
All those in favor of accepting the reports for December and February, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. It's been passed. Next is to confirm the mayor's appointment to the Athens City County Board of Health. I'll turn to Member McCary. Thank you, President Pro Tem Reisner. I received a uh, indication that we have a recommendation to appoint Dr. Anu Gupta to the Athens City County Board of Health. Uh, and that recommendation comes from our mayor. Uh, do we have any comments? Do I have that wrong? Yeah, mm. Member Clotfeld. Uh, I would guess one clarification question. Is Dr. Anul Gupta the one who wrote the book Being Mortal? And no, that's she's uh, a best selling author? Yeah. No, okay. That's well, son. I know that the Gupta family has outstanding <coughs> um, medical professionals in it, so excellent. I was wondering the same thing. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you asked the question. It was a tool to Wandy. <laughs> yeah, Athens really. High grad. Mm. Mm. You would know. <laughs> <laughs> Had some good ones in that period. Maya Lynn, too. So do we have a motion, then? To I would move that we accept the appointment of Dr. Anu Gupta to the Athens City County Board of Health. Second. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor of the appointment, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. It's confirmed. Appointments to the Affordability Housing Commission. Well, let's see. Who do we have? Me. We have Mary Abel. has been nominated. Uh, Mary has served three terms as our state representative and has served in multiple ways in Athens for decades. She also regularly attends AHC meetings, so is very knowledgeable about housing issues and the functioning of the commission. Then we have Amy Lipka. Amy has lived in Athens for 26 years and hopes to remain here for many years to come. She is currently the coordinator for Age-Friendly Athens County at the Athens City County Health Department. Age-Friendly Athens County, AFAC, is a community initiative to make Athens both city and county more welcoming and livable for people of all ages. As a member of the Affordable Housing Commission, she hopes to amplify the unique perspectives and insights that older adults offer when it comes to affordable housing in Athens. So, do we have a motion to accept these appointments? Uh, so moved. Oh, Solvay, okay. Okay, so um, I just wanted to comment that um, I am at least the interim chair of the Affordable Housing Commission and uh, the Housing Commission members specifically asked that we ask these two individuals to join the commission. And so uh, I reached out to them and they're both here. Thank you very much for coming. So they're both eager to get started. We've got a couple of other new members with, um, there's a required member basically with the mayor and also the new planner. Uh, can I mention this, Mayor, it's okay. Megan Jennings, uh, she's our new planner, so we're happy to have her start again. Um, we were, as you know, at a loss with our, the loss of our city planner, and so now that Megan has started, she's gonna be doing this um, amongst a lot of other things. Um, so we're having a full contingent, we'll now have a full contingent of members again, uh, and we hope to get a lot done um, as we haven't really had a chance to for a bit. So I hope that you will all vote these two in, and we're very excited to move forward. And thank you for being here. Member Swain. Uh, to further amplify what uh, Solvay said today, council had lunch with the president of Ohio University, and one of the questions that was posed of the president was concerning bringing people to Athens, both students and uh, faculty and staff. And it was very, very clearly articulated that one of the leading things that we need to work on is affordable housing in all income categories. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez made that very, very clear, as did um, uh, the director of admissions. Um, so uh, I'm looking at these two names, these two people, uh, no offense to anybody that we have voted on, but uh, 
these are two of the finer appointments I think we've had in a very, very long time to any of our boards and commissions, and I can enthusiastically vote yes on both. Well said. Anyone else? Both up and down. Administration? Members of the audience? Candidates? <laughs> okay, we've had a motion and a second for these appointments. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. Looks like you two are stuck. <laughs> Okay, next we have opportunities for citizens to speak on legislative items and city services not covered by the agenda. If anyone chooses to speak along these lines, they'll have three minutes. And uh, please give your name, your address, and if you represent a group, I think there's a sheet up there. Uh, please sure, be sure to do that. I was severely reprimanded by a constituent uh, concerning this. The last time, so anyone care to speak? First come, first serve, whoever can make it first. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to write this down and then I'll start talking. Okay. Well, we won't start the buzzer until. <laughs> I appreciate it. My name is Catherine. I live on Congress Street, and I am here just representing myself. Um, so I have some questions in regards to the Rumpke AHRC bill that I spoke to some council members on last year. Um, so just in terms of this. We need a city administrator volunteer to represent the city of Athens. Is there anyone willing to volunteer or step up to have this position to represent the city on the Council of Governments? So this would mean that you would have a say in prices for hauling, waste, labor, and purchase of equipment through the COG. Um, does anyone want to step up to say that they would be committed to doing this? Um. Our rules are that you can speak, but we don't answer questions. We listen. Okay. Well, thank you for that clarification. I appreciate it. Um, and then in terms of the processing of, like, how city council works, um, when adding agenda items to be in conversation during the meetings, how do those get brought on to the agenda? Is that something I'm allowed to ask? And if not, can I have... Can I have follow-up contact information with the representative that I might be able to speak to you about? Absolutely. That? Okay, and can yep. I get that now or after the meeting? After the meeting. And who shall I speak to? Him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Um, my other questions are not able to be answered, so I will not waste my time or your time, but thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Next. Name, address, etc. I'll fill this out just a second uh, sure. when I'm done. Keep it rolling. My name is John Wood. I'm a resident of Amesville, but I pay taxes in the city as a member of the Athens Farmers Market and an employee of the university. I want to talk to you today uh, briefly about the Bailey's Trail system. And first, I want to thank you for your support up to this point to that project. It means a lot to those of us who ride those trails. I know there's a number of people here who are uh, riders who maybe don't want to speak, but if you came to support the daily, you could put your hand up. That'd be great. Um, I understand that the city's in a budget crunch at the moment, um, but I hope that you can also look to the Baileys to keep you out of the next budget problem. I spend most of my time as a graduate student at Ohio University studying the recreation economy and specifically the Baileys. If you haven't had a chance to read the Bailey's Feasibility Report, published in 2018 by Quantified Ventures. Um, you may have read that, and it said that over a 10-year period, the Bailey's is projected to produce $7 million in tax revenue, $20 million 
in funding and $6.9 million in increased wages. Um, the draft economic impact study, which was cited to you by Jesse Powers, uh, says that we've already generated $3.5 million in the very first year of the trails being open, when only 11 miles were open. So already, this trail system is <coughs> overperforming. Um, but there's another part of that um, feasibility report that I think is really telling. It's a great graph on page 44 that demonstrates how those projections play out with each different um, scenario with the visitation numbers and the quality of trails. While every single scenario shows the trails breaking even, if we invest now and make sure that this trail system gets up to being at what's considered a world-class level with their projecting 180,000 visitors a year, it shows like five times as much tax revenue and it pays itself off faster. I know that there were some questions raised about the validity of the economic impact study. While it's a draft study, I have read it a few times, it's 50 pages, it's pretty thick. Um, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment on what's in it because it's draft. However, it was authored by a city employee, Catherine Jordan, Dr. Jordan, who now heads the Arts, Park, and Recreation Department, and I would encourage you to speak to her about it. Um, you know, I, I used to live in Moab and work in Moab and in, a in Asheville, and both of those places we all know are huge recreation economies. But both of those places, not that long ago, were distressed communities that were recovering from the departure of economic uh, extractive industries. We can do it too. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, name, address. Yep. Yep. So my name is Shannon Pratt Harrington, um, 6539 Hudnall Road. And I'm here representing Zero Waste Event Productions. I can, I can guess what I'm up here talking about. Um, so you don't know what we do. Zero Waste Event Productions is a local business, and we do recycling and composting at music festivals and events. We started out at Nelsonville Music Festival. We've done Pop Pop Festival. I've done it personally for eight years. Um, and I know this is a little too late um, to be having this conversation, but we work out of state a lot of times. We've brought hundreds of thousands of dollars into this community. Two of my business partners are from, one's from Kentucky and one's from North Carolina, have moved to this region because we are a destination for waste diversion and zero waste products, companies, and it's built on the back of the recycling. Um, the recycling building and the compost facility. I'm really here to talk about compost today um, because over the weekend I was at the Cincinnati Mini Marathon. We collected about 400 pounds of banana peels, apples, and there's not a facility in that region that takes this material. That's not the only event we do during the year. Where the only outlet we have for that material is our local compost facility. We took 11,000 pounds of material from events all over the East Coast. We work in 11 states. Uh, we did 38 events last year. We brought 11,000 pounds of compost into our community. It's because we have that as a resource. That resource is being threatened right now. My ability to do my job is being threatened. My ability to keep, I think we have 15 local people hired at the moment. There are five business partners. We have one manager working for us full time. We built ourselves because we had the Athens Hawking Recycling Center, because we had the local compost facility. pop Fest over its years has diverted 20,000 pounds of compost. Nelsonville Music Fest, my statistics are a little less certain, but it's like 35,000 pounds. Um, I guess what I'm saying is I'm really scared about the future of the compost facility. And I think there's still time to do something. And I would hope that you guys still have your ears on the ground and ways to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Do I have a motion to? Uh? I just want to make sure I understand. Hi, my name is. Uh, uh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I thought you were going to continue without giving me your name. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Mike Moulton. I live at Twenty Graham Drive in Athens. Um, 
I uh, live here um, in the area, but I'm a regional sales manager for my company. I, I cover from West Virginia to the Dakotas. And um, I travel a lot with my job, and uh, as such, I, uh, I see a lot of different parts of the country. Um, I am a mountain biker. I'm also a trail runner, hiker, uh, etc. cetera. But um, mountain biking is a little bit my passion. Tomorrow, I'm driving to Grand Rapids to, uh, to a conference. On the way, I'm going to stop in a little town in Chelsea, uh, with, uh, Michigan, that's out of my way. Um, and I'm going there because they have a great mountain biking trail, DTE. And while I'm there, I'm going to probably get gas. I'll definitely get Gatorade and Powerade or whatever, some, some snacks for my ride. Um, and when I'm done, I'll end up uh, eating, eating dinner, spending $20, $25, whatever, at a restaurant there. I travel a lot around the country. Uh, he mentioned Moab. I go to Moab every year. Uh, I go to um, uh, Crested Butte, Colorado every year. I go to those places only to mountain bike. And it's, it's recreation, yes. Um, but I look at this, the Bailey's Trail System is what I'm coming at here. I look at this not as a recreational thing. Sure, it has some recreational qualities and benefits for this community, but I look at it as an economic uh, development thing for this community. And when, when I go to places like Moab and Crest of Butte, Colorado, there are people like me coming from all around the country, literally all around the world, spending thousands of dollars. Don't tell me, I hope my wife's not listening right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's not unusual for me to go to, to Moab or, or Crest of Butte for a week and spend, you know, four, five, six thousand dollars on, on bike rentals and hotels and food and things like that, airfare and whatnot. Um, so I am a big proponent of what's happening at the Baileys. <clears throat> One last thing, um, anybody who knows me knows that I talk to everybody. <laughs> um, somebody ought to spend a Saturday with me during the biking season uh, up at Baileys and just hang out with me and see all the people I talk to on the trails. It's stunning and shocking how many people come here from not just the Columbus, Dayton, Marietta area, but from multiple states. Um, I have two groups from uh, Michigan and a group from Wisconsin who now come down regularly. These are six, eight, ten guys that come down from Michigan. They come down for four or five days to mountain bike, and uh, they spend a lot of money when they're here. And uh, I also know many people locally who um, are people who've moved to the area because of the trails. So big advocate for the trails. Anybody wants more insight from a, a real active, very active user, I'm there every day. I was here late because I was mountain biking a Bailey's a few minutes ago. <laughs> One of the authorized winter monitors over there. So um, I'd, I'd be happy to share any more insight about it, the, the Bailey's trails uh, specifically, uh, but in general about economic development. Thank you. Thank you. Sean O'Malley. Uh, 4724 Angel Ridge. It's outside of the city limits. I do own a property in the city, so I do pay taxes here. Uh, I also would like to speak about the Baileys. Um, I would echo Mike's experience when I travel, whether it's for business or visiting family. If I know about a cool destination, a Whitewater River or a mountain bike trail, I will go out of my way to stop there. Um, a lot of what you've been hearing is like, hey, the Baileys are oh, they're overperforming already. They're great. People have to know about them. You got to fund it to be able to promote it. If I don't know about something, I can't stop there and spend the money stopping at a uh, roof pub or something after I ride, or going and having dinner, or staying overnight somewhere. Um, so, think about that. It isn't just that. It's not just if you build it, they will come. You got to build it and you got to promote it. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas, 28 Avon Place. Um, I wasn't even going to speak tonight. I just wanted to show up. But um, I was here at the end of the year uh, during the last council meeting discussing this sustainability for Athens and everything else we got going on far as the business community here in Athens. I came here as a student in 97, graduated in 2001, started my first business here in 2003. Athens has, I won't say never, but has never been a very business friendly community till over the last few years. Um, and what I'm here to talk about is a conversation I had this morning. And like I said, I wasn't on plan. I love sending you all emails. I enjoy watching you all on Facebook every week. Um, but today, you know, I woke up with a sinus infection and I had to go to the express care. My insurance sends me to Marietta 
because that's a network. So I go to Marietta to the express care. I'm sitting there and the nurse says, oh, you're from Athens. I say, yes. She says, yeah, I stopped shopping there because of the plastic bag ban. Oh. Right? Now, this is, I got recyclable bags in my car. It, it doesn't bother me. I'm used to it. I've been to cities. You got to have recyclable bags. I was in Hawaii. They charge you 15 cent per bag if you don't have a bag. I traveled across the country, across the world. I've seen it. I know how it works. It's fine. But to hear this one person who lives between Marietta and Athens says she stopped coming to Athens to shop kind of resonated here as a business owner because how many other people have felt that? And my thing is this, listening to everything tonight with all the money going to the Stimson Avenue project, all the construction on Union, everything is going on to make Athens better. What are we doing to keep businesses here or attracting business to our area? I mean, for the people who haven't been in Athens as long as I have, we almost lost a lot of business due to the loss for trees. My buddy used to own a McDonald's here in town, all four of them. He did a project 10 years ago in Richland when they tore it down, rebuilt it. He was required to pay over $10,000 worth of trees for the project. Texas Row House almost left Athens because they were required to have X amount of trees. Tim Hortons was delayed because they have X amount of trees. Menards was delayed because of X amount of trees, bike racks, and parking. We sit here and say we want to keep people here. We want to attract more business in town. We're working on the vape ban, tobacco ban, because we want to have more diverse businesses in Athens. But here we are. If you want to put a sign up on East State Street, you got to get three weeks of readings at City Council to get approval for your sign. My thing is this, as the city council, what are we doing as a city to attract more businesses in town? And I will leave you all on this. Four years ago today, Ohio University told 10,000 students don't come back. How much money did we lose? What have we done to fix that? Anyone else? In that case, I'd like to hear a motion to Adjourn for this evening. So oh, Mayor, just in time. <laughs> I just wanted to make a point of clarification uh, for council as well as those who are here who spoke to the Bailey's Trail system. Um, in 2023, so last year, when I was working through the budget for the city of Athens, $90,000 was budgeted and approved by council to be in place for our membership with the Bailey's Trail system. So just know that. I want this group to know that that was budgeted. It is still in its placeholder uh, for that membership. The other thing that's a good reminder for council is when we started looking at this in 2017, as we were looking at the pay for success model, which was a whole different model than the model that we have now, the intent for us to be a payer was to use our transient guest tax where that money ultimately migrates into the general fund. Um, but during that process, that's money that's coming from people's, you know, heads and beds. It's people who are staying in the hotels, and it was the most appropriate, in my opinion, uh, and council at the time, along with our auditor, to sit there and, and have that become our pay-for-success funding stream. We're seeing full hotels more and more now that we're post-COVID. We have a new hotel in the city of Athens. I just had a phone call with developers who want to develop extended stay hotels here on East State Street. We'll see how that plays out. But, you know, I, I just want those who spoke tonight to recognize that it was budgeted, it was in my budget, uh, but also council as a reminder that the, the transient guest tax, the hotel tax, which brings in somewhere in totality, somewhere around $460,000. That's a pre-COVID number. We have the addition of a, a, a new hotel. Uh, we certainly see a lot more short-term rentals that are out there. Those two are, are taxable entities when it comes to the transient guest tax. Uh, but half of that has to go by statute, Ohio Revised Code, to the Convention and Visitors Bureau or Tourism Bureau. The other half, the city retains. Um, and so... Uh, council, just be mindful of that. And uh, again, those of you who are here speaking about it know that I budgeted for that uh, membership, much like I budget for our, our membership with the Athens County Economic Development Council and other organizations that we pay to be members of. Thank you. 
Uh, where were we with the motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. We're adjourned at 825.